Political analyst Ongabam Bamtimka joins us now via Zoom to discuss the elections and the ANC's failure to meet the IEC registration deadline. Ongama, a very good evening to you. Thank you so much for joining us. Welcome to The Globe. Good evening. Thank you for having me. Was the ANC caught with their pants down uh, you know, after the IEC made its judgment that the elections should go on on the 27th of October? Well, the ANC does have cumbersome candidate selection processes and it had prescribed a particular manner of doing things which kind of somewhat departed from what the party was used to. And this was part of the attempts to make sure that the candidates are a lot more appealing than was previously the case, where you found that original power brokers sidelined popular candidates in preference of people that they liked, um, resulting in the party losing elections sometimes to independent candidates who were popular members of the party that were designated to by, that were preferred by some communities to run for what candidacy, but only to be, you know, sidelined by uh, a, a party regional power brokers. So it was attempting to, to, to correct that. Now, what would be interesting for me is whether it was purely uh, impractical and impossible for the ANC on the basis of how cumbersome its candidate selection processes are during the context of COVID-19, or whether there was some the contestation about uh, who to represent the party uh, affected negatively what otherwise was a reasonable process. That would be interesting for me. Uh, and, and I think that the party is asking those kinds of questions in its uh, meeting. So it's going to be interesting what the outcome is and whether, and whether heads would roll as a result of this. It's not the first time that the ANC is bungling registration, but the scale is huge. I know in Nelson Mandela Bay, for example, it lost a word to the EFF uh, because of uh, of that in 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 in, in Udinic. and remember, in order to win a word seat, we are using the first past the post system, which means what however number a party is going to get, as long as they are more than any other party, it automatically wins that uh, that word seat. Just how, how adversely will the ANC be affected, given that uh, you know there's some empty candidate lists, and uh, that they there could be another argument that these uh, you know these wards or these councils or these municipalities that the ANC will not be competing or will not be contesting in, you know, are not are not key municipalities. But uh, how how will this affect the ANC? Uh, just broadly speaking. Sure. So they have said that uh, these can, these 400 some odd um, candidates all belong to about 93 municipalities, 35 of which actually uh, are municipalities in which they would stand to lose their um, uh, 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 um, um, dominant position as the governing party. And then I think there was roughly about 15 uh, subject to correction where they would lose their official opposition status. So the, the impact is tremendous here. All right. Uh, now, how much faith uh, do the, you know, the electorate have on the candidates now that uh, it will merge given the short gap they might get? Very interesting. So there are areas in which a uh, word on the ground is that communities are very pleased with uh, some of the candidates that have been chosen. I've, I've been recently uh, in uh, the, 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 the Eastern K, sorry, in Nelson Mandela Bay, there's a number of words where really credible candidates mm -hmm. actually up. Um, in the past week, I was in Limpopo where the similar feeling was shared by people also in the Goha area. But the challenge is that a lot of people, especially in the areas that I was in Limpopo, felt that the, 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 the processes were still manipulated by uh, regional power brokers. In, and, and, and there were a lot of conflicts about the names, which 
co partly caused the delays uh, that uh, uh, we saw on the part of the party. So it's not a seamless process where there's been across the board a replacement uh, or a fielding of candidates who are credible. Apparently, because of the contestation, some of the candidates who are actually bad apples mm -hmm. might just return. Okay, let's now focus on the constitutional court outcome on these uh, local government elections. Just how accurate was Judge Musenegger's, uh, you know, estimation to recommend to postpone the election, considering unknown risks such as a new variant and uh, not yet known or in more broader terms, immune escape. And seeing that the government's improved vaccine target doesn't really preclude another major outbreak early next year. You see, both, I, I don't understand how the IEC um, is being vilified for the stance that it took. Uh, also, I mean, with uh, Judge Museneke, we are in an environment in which the state has used a, the, the rights which are under a state of emergency, the abrogation of rights, uh, and, 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 and it's using them within the framework of a disaster management uh, environment, okay, because of the uniqueness of COVID-19. I would not, as a result of uh, what has happened, actually go back on the recommendations made by Judge Moseneke on being pre or, uh, 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 cautious in terms of how, uh, whether or not COVID-19 is held. If you remember, um, it was a hybrid approach in terms of the, what, was pro what, what, what the recommendations were. It didn't accede to what political parties, some of the political parties were lobbying strongly for, to have the election actually merged with the 2024 election. But at the same time, in my view, it showed due consideration to the realities of COVID-19. Mm. Obviously, the, the, the one issue that I think was not uh, very clear is the, 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 the sacrosanctness of the Constitution and the process that would have needed to be undertaken in order to ensure that, in fact, this gets to be done. So um, I think there was error across, uh, across the board here. So what I want to emphasize, though, is the, 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 the working of the institutions supporting democracy in South Africa, be it the Constitutional Court and the IEC. I, 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 my view is that the IEC, if you remember the, the debate for a very long time, uh, withheld the line and said to politicians, it was ready to run an election this year. Uh, and it only changed that stance when the Musenega report came out. Uh, I am subject to correction. So, 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 so when it was then criticized for acting on a, an impartial process, which was an outcome of a, 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 so a, a quasi-judicial process, if you like, I, I felt we were a little bit disingenuous and unfair to the, to the IEC. Uh, the process itself could have been handled better by approaching uh, the, 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 um, the, the, the parliament, as uh, Judge Theron asked uh, to the IEC. So granted, but the, 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 the principle of attempting to manage COVID-19 after holding the line and strongly pushing politicians to accept that elections could be held, I think that the IEC did, did well as far as that is concerned. You know, Ongama, you're raising a very uh, valid and I would say compelling argument, especially when you touch on the sanctity of the Constitution. And uh, I want us to read uh, into the sanctity of the Constitution, read it with the basic tenet of every election, that every election needs to be free and fair. Now, Judge Moseneke recommended that, uh, you know, the election will not be free and fair if it's held uh, this year in October. And... Uh, now that the Constitutional Court has decided the election should go ahead, what then happens to this basic tenet of, uh, you know, the election principle of being free and fair? Will this election be free and fair? Obviously, what should have been borne in mind is that neither of the principles um, in the Constitution allowed for 
their consideration alone to be the determinant of what happens to the election. We still, even with the considerations of the extent of the freeness and the fairness, there needed to be a proper procedure followed in determining the issue of whether or not uh, changing the, 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 the dates and the timing affected the term mm -hmm. so 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 it could not and and it's a good thing that the system has actually worked to counter what was a rational approach but uh, would have been a, 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 a would have led to a, a, the realm of the ambiguous when it comes to the constitution uh, so 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 um, there needed to be a proper process that's followed even at the level of parliament to explore what options could have been undertaken there. So it's good that uh, uh, nobody is at liberty or no institution is at liberty to change uh, the constitutional principles of the republic. And in fact, that even the constitutional court itself recognized it, the limitations that are on it when it comes to the extent to which they were free mm -hmm. to actually provide direction here, which actually went against some of the prescripts in the constitution. Now, we've also seen the Democratic Alliance welcoming the IEC's decision to continue with the municipal election. So could the ANC's misfortune mean a jackpot for the opposition? They are, and in differing ways. Mm. So we've seen, for example, in a paper that uh, uh, we've worked at, uh, at NMU, that uh, in, 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 in most townships, the alternative to the ANC has tended to be the EFF. And um, yeah, so, 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 so that's been the case. And obviously we know that in also um, in, in, in places like Nelson Mandela Bay, for example, the so-called colored vote um, has tended to ch exchange between the DA and the ANC. Mm -hmm. So the, the, I would expect that that would be the kind of pattern. Uh, it's overly simplistic, but I think the general pattern would be uh, that way. All right, Tungamam Timka, lovely chatting to you. Thank you so much for your time. It's a pleasure.